Hey everyone, we have a patron. Patreon. You should you should join it. You can only like buck a month, right? Right? Buck yeah, or more. More or more. more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can get a whole bunch of things. Well, not a whole bunch of things, but some things. It's really helpful. Various other rewards. It is, yeah. Yeah. To learn more, you can go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You know, uh, thanks for all our patrons for the support and they're making this podcast. God, that sounds so good. <laughs> I think we might need a better little promo thing. Oh, well. Uh, hold on. Uh, thing. Wait, where's the thing? Where's the thing? This is, uh, no, that's not the thing. That's the thing. Oh, shit. See, you'll find out. In the meantime, we'll do this. Sunday, July 7th, 2023. I'm Jeff, and I don't have a sound playing. Who's your bear? That's right. <laughs> I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. <laughs> and that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody, your bad self. <laughs> Welcome to Cubs Out Loud and Long Fair Podcast of Interminable Link, episode number 745. Uh, we're in person. Surprise! 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 <laughs> We're all in the same place. I mean, after like two months, yeah, almost just give it about a week. No, after two months of actually being in the city, I finally get to see Damon in person and give him a hug yesterday. And not only that, we in my house. We're in his house. Yeah. Which is probably better than being in my my. My really tiny apartment, which doesn't really have as much stuff or any facilities to have something where we can sit down and be in front of a camera. <laughs> Just fix on that. Yeah. I mean, that could be like, like that, that little nook I'm, I've been talking about. Uh, Maybe I can make that like podcast nook. Although we could actually just set up the camera on top of my TV. We could all just be on the food column. I look forward. Ideas. We're still we're still trying to figure out. But we're all in one place. You've seen these two chuckles, chuckleheads, uh, uh, be in the same place at the same time doing one of our their lovely on the road shows. Yes. Or the last time you saw us six feet apart with a divider between us. <laughs> True. Because I was at the bear was run. That the last OTR. That was, that was the last OTR because we were oh. at World Bear and we were in Florida and I got COVID. Yeah. And we recorded the episode, so I had a two room suite, and Damon was over in the on the the living room side that had a bar and a countertop, and he was sitting there. And there were these large panel wood sliding doors that we put into place, and I was sitting like six feet away on the other side, mm -hmm. like well three feet from the door. And, like so, I had my laptop, and I was like, we we're both facing the same direction, and like recording like <laughs> that was COL six seventy two. That was a that was a wild episode to record, but this will be different. Yes, it's been it's been years since I've recorded here. Yeah. Your house. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're all in person. Ta da! It only took uh, well for the two of you. What did we say? It took thirteen years? No, twelve years. Twelve years. Twelve years to actually see each other in person. Because you and I also have recorded in the same room before, but we were doing, we were still doing Skype. It was my, one of my apartments in, in Austin. Did we record when I was down there? Yeah. I didn't remember that. I remember the tray table and you were, I think you were using my overstuffed chair. Oh, maybe I did. Yeah. I just remember that. that was on the second floor. I remember, right. I met you when you were in Austin. I was there for work and I remember we went out for barbecue. Because <laughs> I was telling people this recently about coming down here to record, and I had said, because someone asked me, like, have you ever met? So none of you have met. And I was like, no, I've actually met Jeff before. I said, but I happen to be in Texas for work. So that's how we end up here. Yes. So yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so we're all here. Ta-da! And before we get into uh, the usual stuff, for those that might have maybe sort of kind of sleuthed and figured out, we actually did a little road trip yesterday mm-hmm. because we were here. And these two popped my cherry. So it's true. <laughs> I got to go to the great mega land of Ikea here uh, outside Cincinnati, Ohio. And they got to see me have my first experience going through what is the the mega like store, store like experience of, mm-hmm. of Ikea. Since we're already talking about it. What's good? <laughs> we're doing an immediate what's going on of, yeah. of, of just yesterday. Um, and it, strangely enough, Damon and, and Jim actually arrived. Yes. Well, which seems so weird, you know, because we, Damon is notoriously known for being so, gaily so, late. So, so now you know who is the person that keeps me on time. Oh, so so Jim's the one that, that made sure that you were there. No. no, I planned. I made a point to make sure that we left a little earlier. Oh, okay. Because I wanted to make sure that we got there on time because it's thirty minutes away. Right, and the irony is, so where I stay, usually when I'm in Cincinnati, I stay with, um, uh, I call them family, friends that are family. I stay at their house, and they're not far from you. Mm-hmm. They're just a couple miles away, but I, the irony is I would last mm-hmm. to show up because I did not, like, I mean, I knew, like, mileage, it was like, oh, it's about half an hour. But then, of course, traffic, and if you know anything about Cincinnati highways, they are pretty much always under construction, so or, there was that. Yes. Um. So. Yeah, and then I also added at least a minute trying to figure out how the hell to park at Ikea because the entrance is not the most obvious. Yeah. It's one of those, like, you pull in and you cannot go straight towards the building. You have to go left or right and go way around the parking lot. And if you don't catch the right, the the earliest entrance, you end up then going even farther around, like, almost to, towards the backside of the building to come in again. And anyways, it's like a labyrinth. And then even when I left... You guys had left, and you had left. I was the last one leaving, and I didn't pay attention, and I ended up in going to the outer version of the parking lot and doing, like, these donuts to be able to try to figure out how to get back onto the road that lets you out of the parking lot and onto an actual nearby road. So, there was that. But, yeah. By the way, I only live, like, 10, 15 minutes away from the Ikea. Yeah, that's fair. Because I, I live on the north side. Probably. I live on the north side of the city. You live west. Like, down in boonies and, and yes, it's... west because I, I was like, wow, they're like, wow, this is like Austin, Minnesota. What's on the west side? It's not all. I mean, like, I don't feel think... like out, like, in just driving here, it feels like I went out into the boonies. This so. You'll, well, you'll learn. Um, <laughs> Cincinnati is kind of divided east side, west side. You're technically neither. You're north. But, right, like... Technically, I'm not in Cincinnati. True, true, I'm true. true, 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 true. Right, I was going to say, Cincinnati is very expansive, but not, right. not expansive like DFW. Like, mm-hmm. So Dallas-Fort Worth is like two big cities that are just like symbiotically grown into each other. Or right. Minneapolis St. Paul. Right. So like Cincinnati, like some of the, the other is right in between Dallas Fort Worth and they're not quite touching. Yeah. They're like a triad. You know, it's very open. Yeah. Um but no like so Cincinnati is very spread out and the two seventy five like kind of is the circumference like mm-hmm. highway around it. See, lots Minneapolis St. Paul is even better because that's six six ninety four and then four ninety four. So it actually has two separate highways doing the loop. Wow. It also has 35 uh, west going through Minneapolis and 35 e through through uh, St. Paul and 94 going right down the middle. Yeah, and so like there's a here, reason why traffic in Minneapolis St. Paul is. So yeah, here you're to the north and you're basically west. West of, west of downtown, west-ish. Well, or west. 
Yeah, Northwest. Yeah, because Cincinnati's interesting thing is downtown is the city is on the river. Yeah. So kind of like um, the best and closest reference I can make is Pittsburgh, like because Pittsburgh has rivers. So like the downtown is on the riverfront, and then things are moving around the outside of it. But yeah. Yeah. So we went to IKEA yesterday. Um, I got to see what the IKEA aesthetic is all about and have that experience. We did go to the cafe. We had very yummy food. Um, we all got balls. No, I didn't get balls. You didn't get balls. That's Damon didn't, didn't get, get balls. balls. Damon, Damon decided he wanted to have salmon. Yeah. He had a very healthy lunch. I was very proud of him. Meanwhile, I was the one who got 12 balls. As did I. You got 12 balls too? Well, because I didn't know that you can get 8, 12, or if you really pay attention, you can get 16. Yeah, I, I was like, mm, that's probably for sure. Yeah. I, I was tempted because I was starving. Hungry. As as was I, but then it was very full. But it also came came with some mashed potatoes and some peas. The only thing yeah. is, I didn't see anything, and maybe I missed it. Well, while I'm going through things, uh, they didn't. I didn't see any like butter or something that I could put on the peas. No, and I also thought about that because the peas were very fresh tasting, um, but they had no no seasoning mm -hmm. to them. And I thought of it as we were sitting at the table. I was like. I kind of looked and I didn't want to say anything awkward, like I didn't see any salt and pepper anywhere. But I don't what, know, you like, didn't see me bring little. back with the two packets that I... I oh, I remember, no, no, I remember, because remember. then Damon, yeah, the salt thing. I, but by then I was already eating, and I was like, well, I'm going to help. Well, and then I did the Minnesota thing of just ending up mixing everything. <laughs> so yeah, so we had, a, we had a good experience. I laughed because I, I did end up buying a couple of things, not very much, I just bought being my usual frugal self, I bought stuff on discount. <laughs> um, in fact, I gave Jeff and Ron their, their items, and they were like, you didn't have to buy us anything. And I was like, listen, I paid $2, so <laughs> shut the hell up. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, like, that that dock sale is really the thing to be on the lookout for. And, right. they, and they didn't know anything about it. And I said to them, we kind of talked, and I was like, now I feel like you kind of have to watch to see when they do that, because I get the impression they don't do it very often. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, it was nice to go into that extra section and see the stuff, because that stuff was really, really discounted. And you found something that... Oh, the strainer? I got a, I got a new colander. Yes. Uh, which I think is going to be nice to have. I do have a, have a colander, but mm -hmm. this one's like, it got, it's a whole colander, while the other one is like the... Splash colander, mm -hmm. um, and I think the whole colander might be a little bit better for like training my my canned chicken. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make uh, things. And I was like, I'm speaking of which, right? I got home. I was like, oh, I can use this. I'm gonna make. I, I did get some tuna, and then I realized, oh no, I got the tuna in the packets, yeah. which I don't need to strain. No, you do not. No. Right, right. No. Oops. We'll talk about after. I have to. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. I, I was realizing I have I, I got some I got tuna packets and I've had I don't think I'm gonna use them. Anyway, it's a random aside. Like it's totally So anyways, we did go to go to IKEA yesterday. It was a nice couple of hours. I got a coffee table, which was actually a TV stand, but it works perfectly for a coffee table for the room I want it for. So Yay. um uh, I started putting it together, but it was really late at night, and I kind of got tired, and I was like, uh, "Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go back to working on on trail." And so, anyway, uh, I also got some sleeve bottles, mm -hmm. and I couldn't help but think about dirty things to use that for. But That's I, your choice. but I think the squeeze bottles would be great for like I could just like put some oil in there. Like when I make some of my uh, burger sauce, it'd be great for using that for that yeah. uh, and distributing that. I mean, technically, I could use that for like ketchup too, and ketchup yeah. and mustard. But uh, usually, like, these bottles like I get are easily squeezable, so yeah. it's really not that big of a deal. But um, what else did I get? I got some moss. Did I get something else? Oh, I also got some. I got some frozen meatballs and grabbed one of their packets of, of uh, sauce mix. Oh, nice. The only thing is that I realized, oh, I need heavy cream. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. Sauce. And I'm like, well, fortunately, I have a Kroger that's not too far from my house. Right. Uh, I have. I still have not broken my uh, 
uh, in terms of what's given in charity. So hoping to do that. Make me better excursion. Well, I was just <laughs> gonna say, I was talking with uh, Jeff and Ron actually about Jungle Gems and um, when they had gone, when Ron had gone, it was like a Saturday morning or something. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, when you go to the original, it's best to go probably midweek, not when like the crowds are there because it gets really oh yeah freaking crazy. Make, and easy. Do not go on the weekend. Do not go on the weekend. You By know. the way, I just want to say Jim was awesome, but mid Ernie Palmer is where he is. Um, he spilled. He poured. He poured. Oh okay. So yeah, we um we did that yesterday. It was nice. Yeah. I. I mean, I expected it to take a couple hours just because mm -hmm. it's gawking and looking around and stuff like that. Some of the stuff is really decently priced, like especially like, like not even in the dock like sale section. Yeah, they just yeah. had some things marked down. Like the interesting thing is like the spatula that I picked up that was like fifty cents. Like I figured out why it was marked down because they came up with an exact same version of a different color model, and so they were just like, we need to get rid of the old stuff because right. we have, and I was like. I don't care about the color. Yeah. Like, it's not that big of a deal. It's going to be in a drawer. Like, <laughs> yeah, I need, I need it. about the color. To change my True. Yeah. What I really want right now is, like, uh, or what would be really cool to get would be a electric kettle that's in red. I don't think anybody has red light kettle. They're all black, which is fine because my theme for my kitchen is red and black. Yes, I'm that gay. I'm theming my room. Hey, you do what you can. Yeah, here we go. Do we want to get into our sure. past like, months? Past months, uh, yeah. Respectively, normal start for me. Um, it's always darkest before the dawn. So June has been odd. Mm. Not because of my place or anything like that. Here I am. I'm in Cincinnati for just a few weeks, for half a month. And uh, something about being in a new place got me extremely horny. Okay. So I ended up chatting with this guy, a growler. And... Setting an appointment, I was gonna go to him and say, Hey, can you pick something up? Okay, trust me. Yes, I was thinking with my dick, okay? I was not thinking with my head. I was freaking horny. And you're right. So he asked, Hey, can you pick something up so we can distract my kid? Uh, a, a An Apple gift card. Oh, it gets worse. Oh, I'm sure. And it's me being completely dumb. dumb. Apparently, whatever this game was, was some... I'm going to put this all in quotes. Was, was something that just ended up needing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So I kept getting gift cards. And I'm like, okay, I'm just trying to help this guy out. Being like, no, this is, there were so many red flags. Mm -hmm. And I, I just kept going, and I was just an idiot. Got scammed out of $1,200. Wow. So just so people know who are listening and are watching, Jeff already told me about this. I've, I've known of, about this. I'm going to say, so Damon's the one who's funny. <laughs> um, so I didn't want people to think like I was not oh, caring or interested in who the fuck this is. I, here's the thing. It's, honestly, I don't know who this is. I, I there's, there's reasons why I'm saying that. Um, because, you know, I'm new here. I don't know anything. So, um, yeah, so eventually get got to twelve hundred dollars and I just kind of cut him off and he says, please, please get the card. And I'm like, look, I literally don't have any money. You've drained my bank account. I can't get anything else. And he says, well I'm gonna reimburse you just just you just need to get that last card. 
Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, he's said last card quite a few times. Yeah. Suck it. Well, I mean, for Christ's sakes, I, I don't want any more of this. I just want him to make money back. He, he had given me an address before, which I think is probably bullshit now, now that I'm actually thinking clearly. And, uh, uh, and I mentioned, look, I have no money. I can't get a car because I can't pay for it. Now, maybe if you give me your reimbursement that you were saying, I could get you another car. And then he kept refusing, and I'm like, this is dumb. Yeah. And, and, and he's like, like, I don't even get paid until Friday. And this was on Sunday, Monday, Sunday, mm. Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so... He was like, oh, I can't wait until then. And then, then something happens, like, okay, we'll wait. Until then. And then Friday, it was like, okay. Can you get the one last? No, it goes. I, I, I spent 11 50 that day. Got another $50 for him to get the gift card. And then I was like, no, this doesn't, doesn't work. That, that card doesn't have any money on it or something like that. Fuck this. No, I'm not doing this. I'm not paying any more. I just want my money. This my money back. I've already drove over drafted a little bit. Fortunately we was budgeting enough to, to avoid actually getting too deep into an overdraft. And I'm like, no, I'm not getting anything else. And it just kept refusing and and, and everything. So I just kind of went home and just was like, whatever. And me being like naive and thinking this was actually a real person that possibly was just being a really bad person uh, of not paying me back when he could just pay me back the money I won. And um, he just kept. I just kind of kept it open, kept the conversation until he says, look, we'll meet up here and I'll pay some money or something like that. Uh, we keep going. I keep repeating. Mm-hmm. He keeps saying, so you don't want your money back? And I'm like, I do want it back, but I'm not going to try too hard for it until you just give it to me. And he says, the only way you get it back is if you get that another card. And I'm like, no, I'm it's literally not, not going to do it. Right. Going, that's not going. how that works at all. Yeah. Okay. So, so. Oh, it's not done yet. Oh, God. <laughs> well, it was about two weeks later. I get home from work. Or, or he said, look, you're going to give me that card. Or I'm going to... I know, uh, I know where you live. I know where your accounts are. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get your nudes posted everywhere. I'm gonna send it to your workplace. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, I don't care. I've posted nudes. I've been in a porn, and and you know what? I don't care. You do whatever. You're going to find out it's not going to really impact much, if anything. Now, did you say all that to, to this person? I didn't tell him. I didn't go to him. Well, no, because, so, when you had kind of told me about this, and, and like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was all, like, one event. This was, or this conver- conversation was the initial part of what I'm about to get to. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm going to refer to. And somehow, it was like at ten thirty. I'm going to be releasing all this. Ten thirty rolls around, or ten o'clock rolls around. I'm like, just for good measure, did a few things like uh, uh, reset my Facebook, you know, standard thing, just in case. Good precautions, even if it really didn't do. Mm-hmm. But you know, nothing happened. Crickets. Yeah, imagine that. Next thing I know, he starts making death death threats. Uh, needless to say, scared the living shit out of me. 
And I literally, for the first time in my life, signed one. I was here. I literally like had like as much lights off as I could, so we couldn't see into the apartment or anything. And I had my blinds closed anyways, and. I actually just kind of started, like, when I was on the call, I even went into my kitchen, which is opposite side of the apartment and not within visual sight of it. And, like, I was utterly terrified. Um, uh, officer came over, took the report, gave him everything that I could about, uh, that I had about him and, and even transcripts of the, because here's another thing, we switched from Growler to WhatsApp, but I'm able to, was able to export the WhatsApp conversation Good. and emailed it to him and, you know, just sent him everything he had, had, I could, and, and he says, okay, look, most likely, did you ever tell him where you live? I'm like, no. And he's like, okay. Most likely, it's just a whole bunch of bluffing, mm-hmm. trying to scare you, trying to trying to get more. This is all just a scammer scamming. Right. Uh, you're probably not getting the money back. At that point, I had already just written it off. Like, right. I did something done. I lost $1,200. What can I do? And I'm still hysterical, terrified at this at that time. And he said, look, here's what, here's some things you can do. I don't think anything's going to come to this. It's probably going to just kind of whimper out. But uh, as precautions, because we still kind of have to take this seriously, um, don't go at night, leave your apartment front light on at all times. And he just gave me some, some mild uh, precautions. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next day, I actually told my, because we were working at that point in time from noon to nine, and I had just started the, because we had a series where we were actually training with uh, the client for the workflow we're doing, and it got to a point where we needed to train one of the batches that was in that training that had already started, so... Um, they just said, okay, this week, just go up, start, start their training. I got, we got some new people that are need onboarding as well, etc. So I got to start doing my job top. Oh, so instead of being, being trained to do training, uh, in onboarding, which is a whole nother issue. Mm-hmm. But I pulled her aside, told her what was going on and said, Look, can can I can we get off at eight instead? Uh, because and I explained the situation. It's just like this is so I'm driving during daylight, and I get home and safe, and things might be be totally fine in the end. But you know, probably. so we eventually were able. To, she said, "Yeah, we'll do eleven to eight instead of twelve to we were only doing 12 to 9 because that's what people downstairs were doing, but that was because the client was here. <laughs> it's like, and I'm like, well, we're not dealing directly with the client. I, we could be working the lemonade anyways. 10 to 6. Right. But, you know, I tried that. <laughs> that's the time. Um, and then, and uh, yeah, it ended up just kind of being a whimper reason. He tried chatting me up a few times. I blocked him at this point in time. It's, I just lost him. So, uh, rule of thumb, if somebody asks you to pick something up, hope it's like, can you get some lube? <laughs> Not necessarily for them to keep, but they need some lube. Yeah. Or some other, you know, supplies for the event. That would probably be the extent of what yeah. you could purchase for anybody. So, I learned stuff the hard way. Don't think we did a dick. Well, I mean, so two things ended up happening in this. Like, it started off as a scam, the whole gift card aspect of things. 
And then it pivoted, and when they started threatening with mm-hmm. the nudes thing, then that moves into the territory of what's called sextortion, mm-hmm. which is like extorting things out of people like related to sex. And in this case, they were like wanting to give your nudes and, and stuff out to the world or post them to your work. And when you reached out to me about that, like my thought was, which I'm glad to hear later, like you you had the attitude that you did, which was, I don't care. Like, like it's not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. But it did make me think about, like, with my job, if that were to happen to me, like, what would that mean? And I'd have to have a frank conversation, you know, with my higher-ups about what's going on. But I also feel like, given that I work for the local government, I'm like, you kind of be an idiot to do that. Mm-hmm. Because... Not that I work for the FBI or the CIA, but I'd be like, really? Like, like there's, you're not going to get very far with that, you know, in, in that case. It's not going to do much. And given the work that I do, it has to revolve around people and their behaviors. And one of those behaviors is having sex. So, like, it's not unheard of. I mean, it would be a weird blending of, like, my personal life versus my work life, which it shouldn't be, but... Like, but it did make me think about that. Like, you have to take caution when you're interacting with people in, in social media and websites and that. And, like, I've thought about that a lot since mm-hmm. you talked to me about it. That, like, yeah. you know, like, I'm here. I'm in Cincinnati. I go on the apps. I'm, I'm, I think I've talked about this over very openly. I'm a lawyer. Like, I'm very, like, interested in, in kind of seeing and watching. Not that I'm really seeing and watching anything, but, like, seeing profiles and that kind of stuff. And you never know, I might end up, you know, having a conversation with somebody that does turn into something over time and significant. And yet, like, pay attention to those red flags, like those things that come up that keep you kind of wondering what really the situation is. Um, And it is different, especially when it's just about, you know, brown chicken, brown cow, like activity kind of stuff. Yeah. As opposed to like dates and like possibly it being a relationship or right. whatever. So, so I think overall, you know, I will say I'm sorry it happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a little, I'm getting angry because it happened here. Probably more like because like yeah no no that's yeah, fair yeah because it's fair. here. Um, so maybe that's why I'm like, who the fuck is this person? Because. But don't no, I don't need that. We're not going to get it off. You you've taken care of it. You've done. No, we can see if you can find my. I mean, I probably can't find him because he's blocked. Yeah. (laughs) Well, but and this kind of like brings up the thought about. I mean, we've heard stories of people having hookups go very very bad, like like disastrously in 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 horrible ways, and so it, it kind of. I mean, there was a time a couple of years ago. Like, I, I, I will own that I did this. I created a Google Drive folder mm-hmm. that was password accessible. No, it wasn't even password accessible. I shared it specifically with a couple of friends who I trusted, like, that I wanted them to have the knowledge that there was potential of a hookup happening. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be embarrassed about it. And I did that intentionally that I put in the doc. I told them, I said, hey, I'm going to share a folder with you and there's going to be a document in there. If something were to happen, go to this document. You will find what information I have already put on there, which was meant to be profile name, any identifiable information, a phone number, an email, like whatever. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what really prompted it. Most likely it was one of these, you know, really you know, bad stories in the press about a hookup that, you know, ended it um, very unfortunately. And just as, as a cautious kind of thing, because it made me realize I'm single. I live by myself. Like, I don't, I'm not really answerable to anybody. And it probably would be a little while before someone might notice something. Mm-hmm. Like, I have some habitual things. So, like, every Sunday, pretty much, we record the podcast. Right. If I disappeared, these two would probably, like, start blowing up my phone or something and being like, what the hell? Um, and then there's work. But outside of that, there's not a whole lot else that kind of tracks that stuff. So that was my way a few years ago. This was probably pre-pandemic, maybe? That I put that together. and never really ended up using it. But it right. looked... 
but it does make me think about things. Like, I've always been kind of cautious about someone coming into my home. Mm-hmm. Like, but it also makes me cautious about going to someone else's home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm like, there's, there's you know, a, like, it, like it, there's a part of me that would, you know, yeah, I'd like to go over so, you know, I can have some fun, but at the same time, I'm like, one, it's somebody else's house, usually, and I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. And then two, what's the safety standard? You know, I don't know. It's it's yeah. mixed. It's one of, one of those things where you kind of have to figure out the balance between mm-hmm. it is safety and risk. Yeah, that you know, is the risk and being risk aware. That's yeah, like, yes, that's, that's fair. Risk aware, consensual. Yeah, rack is a is a thing in the key community. Mm-hmm. Knowing and understanding the risk involved and being okay with doing the things because. You have to be aware of what could potentially happen, and you can potentially prepare, but you're not going to be able to prepare for everything. That's right. That's fair. But uh, but again, being being yeah. aware yeah. of what, what it is and, mm-hmm. and be willing to take that risk. Yeah. And I think we all can say at some point in time we've been guilty of thinking with our second head as opposed to our first head, and yeah. that is often oh, there it's guaranteed. I have done things in the past. I look back on it and I'm like, ooh, you were <laughs> you were. You were chemically imbalanced. You were not necessarily like being cautious with that. I mean, one of my this is going to sound weird. Uh, fonder recalls of a hookup was a person I met at the bar had been drinking, went to their house. We were in their basement. Like, see, see, like there are these <laughs> things where you're like, and and I've never been to their home before. Uh huh. I like, although I will say this, when I'm driving near near that neighborhood, I do think of them every once in a while. I think I don't know if I'd find the exact house, but there's a part of me that like there were some distinct things that stood out about it mm-hmm. as a complete sidebar. I don't know if I mentioned this before, while we were like going at it in the basement, they had a TV on in the background and Richard Simmons infomercial <laughs> was playing. <laughs> so every time like it, like like an oldie, like replay yeah. of a Richard Simmons clip or something comes on, it oh. invariably makes me think about that. Oh I, lord! Because I, there was a part of me that was just all I kept thinking is, could we, could we just, could we turn, could we turn the video? Could we mute it? Like, okay, I mean, like, it? like you know, or turn it, turn yeah. the volume down to three or something? Yeah. Yeah. You know, anyways. Yeah. 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 I will say, yeah, I've had the. the <laughs> we could, I mean, we've had our, you know, you know, bad sex stories. We've talked about that in the past on the show and. And I could, we could probably, ooh, this might be another topic. Like, we could potentially bring up things like the horror stories, as it were. In, 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 in some sense, uh, this also is a, a good PSA for those people who are filming uh, acts for posting on various platforms. You mean content creators? I said creators. <laughs> um, well, well, for one thing, and this is, it's not shade, that's true. No, um, but here's, here's one thing. If you're trying to have sound to muffle the current actions because you don't want to disturb neighbors or whatever, don't use a standard television. Use music. Well, so this is where it gets a little tricky, because if you're a content creator, music is copyrighted. And so you can get into trouble legally that way, mm-hmm. that you're not paying royalty rights for music wow. unless you get royalty for free music. Otherwise, or if you know the artist personally and you ask them permission to put their music in your background. Or you use royalty-free music. Right, or, but I, I hear you, like, like there's also, because we've seen those videos, like, when, when Pornhub was the thing, when X2 was the thing, the amateur stuff that was happening in people's homes and they'd have like a movie or a TV show on or whatever in the background, there were times I was busy paying attention to the commercial or whatever was happening because I was trying to figure out what was playing in the background because no offense, what was happening right in front of the camera was not that like exciting. I mean, it wasn't horrible. It was just like, you know, it was distracting. You know, it's kind of like, I was like, oh, that's the weather forecast. Well, that means this must have been at that time of year. Because sometimes it would actually tell you, or there'd be a phone number. They'd be like, area code 513. And I'd be like, what's the area code for 513? Like, cause, and I don't think people realize that that stuff kind of identifies yeah. you. Yeah. So that's why I, there's YouTube channels specifically for like royalty-free music and an audio library for music content creators. 
Okay. Yeah. Anyway, just as I said, royalty free music. There is sources for royalty free music, and you can find some good stuff out there too. Or if you're not going to record it, then yes, put on your your you know hookup playlist <laughs> for for getting your groove on. As long as no one's recording, who cares? Like you know. So things are especially. For, yeah. Well, here's here's part partly a problem is because I didn't have that twelve hundred dollars. Uh, I did get very short on cash mm -hmm. because uh, May twenty ninth, I submitted one of my claims for relocation, so mm -hmm. I get reimbursement for that. One of this in this case was for movement of goods. So before I submitted that, I had to email the receipt and how much I'm claiming to uh, one place to get an approval. Got that approval. And then I was going to kind of hold on to it while I try to get the stuff that I need for my apartment, my old apartment, so that I can also email that same group to have them approve it so, because they're large sums of money, I think it is, because it's like movement of good, movement of car, and, and lease breakage mm -hmm. of excess rent. Uh, I can claim that I need approval from this one group. And I put on May 29th, I put in the claim. It was approved by my supervisor, it was approved by the MAC approver. Uh, then it went to finance. Where it gets lost. And it stayed there. Right. It is just nothing happened. For a week, for 11 days. For 11 days, out of 11 days, and this is probably about like late, not quite the end of July or June. Why now? June. And uh, they finally say, hey, we can't read your receipt. And, like, and then, unfortunately, the people we had had, I think they wrote in pencil, and also they gave me the carbon copy and not like the top copy. So, yeah, that's fair. And I didn't have anything for, for things. And I don't know. I just, and I, and in the end, I, I, I submitted something else, and they were like, no, that's not good enough. And then I'm like, God, for fuck's sake, I need this money because I'm like, literally, like, I'm not even sure if I was able going to be able to pay my rent this week. Because in addition to that, I finally get my stuff for my, my, so that I can submit that. Uh, one, the group that I have to email, I have to email to get the approval for before I submitted the claim. They, they, they emailed me back saying, "Hey, can you please call me? Here's my number." And I tried calling them five times, and never got them to answer the phone. And I left the messages like every time. And next thing I know. It's proof. <laughs> After I was also complaining to my my supervisor about this. As well. Basically, they've been trying to keep tabs on how our project is going because they should be pushing this through. Mm -hmm. So they're they're trying to make sure everything goes as smoothly as possible. Um, and then a after the second request, I'm just like, I've had enough. I've already one, my job, the work that I'm doing. I need to concentrate on these new hires, but I'm training somebody who's training a group that's been here for a month and hadn't gotten started the training because we were doing the training downstairs. And then they've been here for a month. They got some new hires that needed to be onboarded. They don't have access to the tools because we need equipment from the client in order to be able to access all the tools. And then the very next week, we have another new hire and then two, Two of these new hires aren't even the workflow that I'm trying to train, but they won't need to do the onboarding. They're not taking them until they're done with the onboarding. They're all done with all their mandatory trainings, which takes a week or two if the LMS system is actually working properly. And then finally, finally get the approvals. And, and because of the thing came in back, and my, my supervisor came in, okay, let me see three. Receipt. Okay, he pulls out a pen and actually overwrites all the parts so that it's actually clear. And I'm like, I 
swear they're probably going to say something like, well, that's, you, you altered the thing. But in the end, uh, they, one, they approved the claim for my lease breakage, which was the last claim I did about two weeks after I submitted my, my movement of goods one. First. Of course. Let's just work backwards. <laughs> yeah. Totally makes sense. And then a day or two later, and I think it was because we're like, look, this is the, the, my my uh, supervisor got together with some people who were like, this is bullshit. Just approve the damn things and get them paid. Right. They they have all the documentation. Just approve it. Okay. Just do it. And they approved that. And then I have to wait for the payment to get through. Well, fortunately, I got my bigger amount, my my lease breakage. Got that before my rate came due, so I just mm. to pay my rent on time. Good. Also, at that same time, I was able to to hit purchase on my Amazon cart. Guess what was in that cart? Your bed. The Casper pillow. Mmm. Casper red frame. The Casper. They're Box spring foundation doesn't have any spring, so I don't know why it's called spring. The Casper mattress, and then the pillow came first, then the mattress. Oh, the, then the next Monday, got my bed frame. The next day, I got my, <laughs> I got my foundation, put those together quite quickly. So now I have a bed, Good. and many people. I've seen proof. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did post in Telegram. I took a picture of my bed. I was waiting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I was presuming that's what you meant. Yeah. Uh, and then, also during that, the end of the uh, month, the latest expansion of, Don, of um, Final Fantasy XIV launched. Yay! So I've been making my way slowly through that while occasionally putting together furniture because I've got a nightstand and I've got my stuff and I've got my, my table that I started putting together. I'm still not done with, with the, the, the MSQ on that, but right. I'm working my way through those things. It's been fun. I, I really in, have been enjoying it. Good, good. Um, there has been this one part of the MSQ where they're like, is there someone you would, someone uh, who has passed that you would like to see again? There is one person I would really wish to be with again. Who passed in 2007, a year after I moved down to Austin. Right. Seamless to say. But this is how what Final Fantasy does to us. Um, it makes us cry. <laughs> okay. And so. My life has been um, complete the last two fucking of the beginning of the month, um, and then just stress up to the very last minute. And my work just wants to drive me crazy because, uh, guess what? I got new fires on my day. I know that's done training the previous batch. Wow. I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah. I will be fine when this is all over. Right, right. I know. And, but one thing that I at least got guaranteed from my boss is I will be able to take my two week vacation at the end of August. Okay. Because my, that's an annual ritual, you could say. Yes. Right. <laughs> See, this is what you do you save up your, your vacation time and just take it in like one big batch. Maybe not the entire thing, but a big batch. I'm only spending 10 days and I can save up to 20. I've got well over that. Yeah. Somewhere in the twenty the ten to twenty range. Yeah. I haven't looked yet. But in any case, that was my month. Hey, <laughs> well, you're working on that. 
Who's on your mask? Go for it. Actually, we have one more. Well, yeah, one. Anyway, so I'm going to keep going. Um, so June is Pride Month, obviously. We talked about that. I'm going to your half stuff. But... Yeah. Uh -huh. So um, I, for the first time in a while, decided to mark in the Sensei Pride Parade um, as a title holder. Since I left oh, did you, everything. Did you go with? With the soul yeah. of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. we're going to get to that. Okay. We're gonna talk. If you read what, what I've said, you'll understand what's about to happen. Okay. So, yep. Okay. Um, so, um, for those of us that aren't, that don't, for those of you who don't live on the East Coast, um, there was a bit of a heat wave around the end of June, actually for much of June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, since I pride, the, the Saturday day was going to be, was no exception. It was going to be uh about 90 something degrees if not more than that on that day so we you know i took precautions we've talked about precautions um i um bought a little thing to have a fan i wore a very light outfit consisting of basically a, a tank top and like a kilt rip kilt like one of those lightweight kilts um I did not wear boots because it was. I knew I was marching in a frame, and that that just wasn't going to happen. So, right. um, kept it very light. I did have my stole on, hat, hat, and all that stuff. Like that was that was the extent of what I was doing. And our um, high fish, who is the current world pet, but was the former and first Cincinnati critter. Mm -hmm. um, he was like, I'm going to bring a shit ton of water, and that's going to be a thing that we'll have. So I figured, okay, well, I brought some of my own, mm -hmm. um, and I figured, oh, that'll be, this will be great. Well, not great. I'll, I'll get through it. I'll get through the parade. I had a backup. I, not backup. I had a plan. I wasn't staying for the festival. Like, I was going to mark in the parade. Jim was going to pick me up at the at the festival, and I was going my ass, kicking my ass home. Like, that was the plan. Yeah, you and he don't do so. Yeah, I don't. So, and we're getting to that. <laughs> um, so, um, the parade kicked off. Like, and granted, I was there at 10. The parade didn't kick off till 11, a little after 11. And um, it was, you know, did pretty well. Drank shit, like, water, like, constantly. Was, and it was, really for the most team. part, that actually, <laughs> no. So that's the problem. You'll understand. So, um, um, was fine for the most part. Got through some of the parade. There were plenty of there are many areas of shade, which was great because it's downtown, so there's big tall buildings and such. So that helped. Um, it was up until we got to, we were heading down towards the river, um, or Cincinnati. Um, the parade goes down past, I believe between the Underground Railroad Freedom Center and then like basically this block of buildings before the stadium and it goes around those buildings and then goes back down and then goes over to Surrey Park which is at the end of the park. We got started going downhill and that's when like we started start starting and stopping and starting and stopping and I was noticing if I was moving I was fine. Mm -hmm. But starting, stopping, and then having to start again, I was getting, like, the the track was getting to me. So, um, tried to get as much water. There are people, like, you know, think people that were in the festival that were um, spraying water, doing what they could. We got around the stadium. And we had stopped for a moment, and we were there for a good while, because... It was vehicles and stuff, and you had certain people. This was like the exit point, so you had people getting around to where they needed to go. Vehicles went one way, walkers went another. Mm -hmm. But again, it's going to be a traffic jam because there's all these people. There's 100, 200 something entrants in the parade. Uh, I was noticing I wasn't feeling great. I was getting um, breath was getting like short of breath. Um, feet were killing me, and I did not have 
which is a sign of dehydration. Oh. So I, I was like, I, I was going to see if I could make it successful, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to make it. So I was like, I'm going to leave. I stepped away from the parade and got to some shade. I grabbed my water. I started drinking. I sat down for a minute, and I wasn't feeling better. I wasn't getting better. I was um, very much like couldn't catch a breath very weak, my feet were very weak, and all this stuff. So, um, called out for help, because again, like, the parade has kept going. Um, called out for help. Random strangers, don't know who are, thank you whoever you are, I don't know if you'll ever see this, but thank you to whoever it was. Um, they saw me, I told them I needed help. Uh, one of them um, went to go get a police officer or someone down at the festival to maybe go get something. The police officer showed up, um, asked me if I wanted to get checked out. I'm like, yes, because I could not, I was weak and I could not get up. Like I was feeling that kind of weakness. Um, and while that was going on, I feel like six or seven other people, again, random strangers that were just coming to the festival, probably had watched the parade, mm -hmm. um, came around me, they were fanning me, they were giving me water, um, and they stayed there. And I think that was the best thing, because they didn't have to. Right. And they were and they were talking me up and like, you know, keeping my spirits up, which I think was really appreciated. Um, I was coherent, because I was reaching out to Jim and told him what was going on, so he would be on alert and know what was happening. Um, I got checked out, um, my vitals were fine, so uh, they did um, blood sugar and you know check my blood pressure and all that stuff. I knew that could have been an issue too because I have high blood pressure, but everything was fine. So we're like, okay, so do you want to be transported? And I'm like, no, because I'm fine. I know I have someone here. I just have to get to them. So they let me go. Um, I made it to the festival, grabbed more water, kept going. I took my sweet time because I was walking still. Um, caught up with Jim and he picked me up and we came home. Well, we got food because that was the other thing. I was, I was probably hungry because I had mm -hmm. only ate that morning. And I stayed the fuck home. <laughs> um, I stayed the fuck home. Um, the chorus had... Um, was supposed to be singing at five o'clock at the festival. And I had my original plan for the day was I was gonna do the fest, do the parade, come home, rest for a little bit, have some food, and then go back out. Yeah, so made the conscious decision. I once I got home, I was feeling much better staying in this AC house and such that helped, but uh I knew better, and it was for the best. But I really cannot thank the people, the random strangers that stayed and stuck by, didn't know me from Adam, mm -hmm. person. And um, they, one of them had like a rag, they, uh, not rag, but like one of those cool scarves that mm -hmm. they grabbed. So I got, they put that on my neck and everything. So, yeah. That was my Cincy Pride mishap, as it were. Yeah, I gave up on going to Pride uh, a long time ago. I didn't like being like him too. And and for me, it's I the only reason I felt bad was that I the I'm a you know board member for the chorus and we have a booth that we needed staffing for the the, the day and it's a great way for as a person who doesn't charge a membership, I should be kind of there. But I was like, I my health is more important and that was one thing i did reach out to my um artistic director for the chorus and he was like because i have a so i was we were going to be doing the song and i had a solo yeah. and obviously i'm going to be there to do the song so um they were like i don't care about that like how are you kind of thing which right. i thought was very a great way to put it so yeah that was me Okay. Yeah. After all of that. Yeah. Gary? <laughs> um, well, I traveled, you know, this 
these past couple of months have had a lot of travel. In fact, someone recently said, do you travel a lot for work? And I was like, well, not intentionally, but it's just turned out this way. Like, since March, I've been doing a lot of um, driving here and there. Uh, last month, I went to... I'm trying to think of where all I went. So I ended up going... Um, Oh, well, earlier in the month, I went to Columbus. I went to Columbus Prime. Mm -hmm. um, hung out with Chester, uh, stayed um, with him. And uh, this year, they were not going to be marching in any particular part of the parade. So we actually watched the parade. Mm -hmm. We only end up seeing the first two and a half hours, not quite three hours of a four-hour parade. Because <laughs> Columbus is very long, very, like, like hundreds of thousands of people show up. It's a big, big deal. Um, so I hung out with them, uh, with the, the furry group. Mm -hmm. We had a cooler, we had bottled water, we had snacks. Um, as the parade went on, I noticed that people kept receding and dissipating and they were hiding in the, in the, <laughs> in the shade yes. because to be near the street in the section we were at was pretty much to be in the full sun. And we had brought a whole bunch of sunscreen. So at a certain point, there wasn't hardly anybody left of the original group of like 30, 40, 50 people. So um you know chester had said like do you want to you know go to the festival do you want to just go home and i was like we can go to the festival so we went back to the car took the cooler back and all with the leftover stuff and then went down to the festival um hung out for a bit and then um ended up eventually going and uh i think we went and got dinner or someplace but it was nice to like get away and do i enjoy going to another city's pride just to see what pride is like where they where they mm -hmm. do that and what how they organize things and that's because i'm on the board at home so in between that and our own pride, I ended up having to travel um, south by a couple of hours to a local city for a one day conference. That was a really good um, gig to be able to do that. And got to network, have uh, someone local from where I am, another provider actually come to an event that I go to um, and see the same kind of people. So it was nice to like have them be introduced for, to other folks. Um, for the statewide coalition, you can apply. And so this I think is helping prompt them to apply mm -hmm. and maybe see if they'll get you know, to be a member uh, in the coming year. And then we had our Pride, which was a week ago this weekend. Mm -hmm. It was at the very end of June. And you know how, like, we had the heat waves. So I guess I'll ask, since both of you live here, do you remember what the weather was like last weekend here in Cincinnati? It was cooler. I feel like it was cooler. No, 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 no. Last weekend? Um, I don't know. I didn't leave my. It was about eighty. It was in the eighties. Right, I'm referring. If not, yeah, it was definitely in the eighties. Did you have storm fronts? Yeah. I thought it was rainy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. So we had an outdoor pride fest, and we moved to a new location, which doesn't really have shelter. Mm. So. Uh, the Friday, the board made the decision to move ahead with having the event because it was a 40% chance or less of uh, severe impact to the event. We knew it was going to rain, and we decided to move ahead. So we were there at 9, 9.30 in the morning, meeting with the security team, going through that information. Um, they have a direct line with the National Weather Service, public safety's involved. Like, I mean, this is a big, big deal because our event has grown quite a bit over the years. Mm -hmm. And we're at a new location, so now it's a new, like, it's a new plan and, like, evacuations and emergency stuff and all these right, things. Right. And it is raining. Mm -hmm. Pouring, in fact. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of knew. Like, in fact, I was amused because I showed up and most of the board members were running around with umbrellas. And I thought to myself, why? Why Why are you bothering? <laughs> like, you're going to get wet and an umbrella makes you one-handed. Yes. Like, no one's running around with a hat version yeah. or one that's, like, a harness on your shoulder. So, like, like, and we had to set up 120 tables, oh, 240 chairs... We had 140 tables and what 280 chairs like so like and we and because of the rain the grassy area where the food trucks were going to sit was now no longer an option because we didn't want to tear up the ground and have them get stuck mm -hmm. so we had to pivot and put them in a certain parking area so a lot of these things happen and the tables and chairs are like 45 minutes to an hour late God. so that delays allowing the vendors to come in and get 
Now the vendors are like getting squabbly with us because they want to get in and we were keeping everybody out of the park area because of this whole setup debacle and like you know we've got the volunteers some of the volunteers are canceling vendors are canceling they're trying to call the board members and and we're like we're busy (laughs) like we're very much a boots on the ground organization this is not some corporate office entity where there's people manning the phones like that's not how it works so anyways it continues to rain it kind of lets up a little bit and by this point like we decided to hell with the map, we had already predisposed and numbered where all the tables were going. We had made a spreadsheet where people were assigned. No one had been told this year. Usually we do that in advance. And we tell vendors, like, oh, you're going to be at spot, you know, 3A or whatever. <laughs> we didn't do that this year. And because of the rain, the president was just like, to hell with the map. Like, first come, first serve. Like, just take your damn table. Like, we don't care about any of this. Right. So we did that. And the vendors were coming in and they were getting set up. We were doing and then, you know, uh, the security team, this um, contract company we have to work with because of the space we're in is required, is taking care of security out front, and there are people, you know, waiting to get in. And so um, they start letting people in finally. We were delayed with that. Uh, we still have entertainers. I asked a board member at one point, I was like, is the person who's taking care of the audio system, have they bothered to pay attention to whether or not, like, the rain is going to be an issue? Because I'm thinking... What we don't want is a headline that a drag queen got electrocuted in a rainstorm. Just saying. <laughs> right, very funny, but also not the kind of press no, we want. No, no. And the thing is, where we're performing at, it's an amphitheater that's outdoors. So, like, there's a shell and a cover, but it's 360 open mm-hmm. to the elements. And we're on the bay of oh, the lake. God. So there's wind. I mean, there's all these factors. Anyways. So we start the official fest, like we start letting the public in, and we didn't get the messaging out very well. We own it. Like it had been out there, but people didn't quite know that when they came, any open containers had to be disposed of. Mm. So like people who went to Starbucks or to a local like, you know, convenience store and got a coffee or something like that and hadn't finished their beverages, all those were being thrown out. So they asked us to have some trash receptacles up front. And there was a long, long, long line. Oh, boy. So many people patiently, beautifully waiting in the rain. Umbrellas, ponchos, you know, I am soaked. soaked. Like, like I knew I was going to get drenched, and I was perfectly fine with it, because it was, like, 78 degrees. So it's warm. Mm-hmm. Like, the one thing I cannot stand is being cold and wet. Yeah. But I'm not cold. I'm just wet, <laughs> because... It's warm. And so, like, the rain kind of started up again, so I go out front, and I'm helping wristband people. We're wristbanding purely to have a head count, to, like, have an estimate as to how many people came to the event. Right. And while I'm out there doing that, someone behind me starts saying, they're not letting anybody else in. And I was like, okay, that's odd. And then the other piece of the puzzle was, like, because of the rain and the distance and the storm, we weren't using our walkie-talkies we had brought because they weren't going to work and we didn't want to have issues with the batteries if they got wet, blah, blah, blah. So then I'm trying to call one of the board members, and they can't hear me because they're way up at the other end of the park near the water, and, of course, wind. Like, long story short, we got a tornado watch. <laughs> and it was for eight hours. Oh, no. So the board pivoted and decided we had to shut the event down. So we had to get the word out to let everybody know that we were shutting down officially and everybody had to leave the park. And all the vendors had to pick it. Oh, and no. So within four, no, within five hours, we basically set up in the rain, got everything ready, got everything delayed launched, and then turned around and reversed everything to the other direction. And consequently, that was Pride Nights. And so we shut it down and all the rest of it. And then uh, the very next day was the Pride Parade. But the front had already come and run through. And got it out of the system, basically. So then we turned around and the very next day did the parade, mm-hmm. which was much better weather. Although it was windy, and when you're in just a t shirt and shorts, you're like, when the wind's not blowing, it's nice. But when the wind's blowing, it's a little bit chilly. 
So uh, I actually walked in my very first Pride Parade in my hometown ever. Ooh. And someone had said to me about, like, a, a, a good friend of mine was like, you've never walked in, in the parade before. And I was like, no, I haven't. I've walked in other cities, but not my own city, as it turned out. So uh, it was an interesting experience to do the parade because what we decided was to um, not do the parade right before the festival like we normally do. So in the past, the parade was always the kickoff. And it came down the city, Main Street, and then it got to the park where we used to have the parade. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, the festival started when the parade arrived. So, a couple thousand people would just suddenly flood into the park and fill up the park and then all that stuff. And then we'd have the stage and the event. And this year we separated out because we moved to a different location for a more secure event. Mm -hmm. We had protesters over the past, and they weren't necessarily a problem, but we were getting uncomfortable with the lack of ability to ensure our own security. Mm -hmm. Like last year, there were protests. If you remember, I think it was last year was the U-Haul incident, where the U-Haul delivery truck was full of the guys that were all in the khaki pants and the navy, like, like polo, like mock turtleneck sweater crap with the bandana masks and the sunglasses and, the, and they were intentionally going to interrupt a, a pride fest and mm -hmm. were carrying like like sticks to beat people with oh yeah like a lot of shit happened and so a week before the event all these things are happening at all these prides across the nation that there's potential rioters and disruptions and stuff so we were very nervous last year about what could happen because our park is 360 access it's downtown and even though you can block roads, there's no real way to keep people on their feet from coming in and doing anything. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were working with the city police, and we actually got um, a SWAT team, um, thank very thankfully, like last minute, and it didn't cost us to come in. So we literally had two big black armor bullet protected vehicles going around the outside perimeter of the park a year ago. So that was part of the reason we selected a new location to have more secure, like, access and comfort for our guests. Um, so it was a big lesson in a lot of that. But, but going to the parade to the second day and separating it to keep the parade where it used to be, um, there's nothing at the end of the parade. Like, I mean, we went to the park, <laughs> but we didn't have anything planned. Right. Because it was just the parade. Woo! Um, and some people had kind of understandably criticized us, you know, on a bunch of things about, like, you know, having to continue and then the delay, then the shutdown. I mean, like, there was a lot of stuff. And we um, just this very weekend had our um, monthly board meeting and we did a feedback session and talked about, like, the things that people, you know, kind of criticized us on and stuff. And and we also talked about how some people, we, we feel like, well, they were trying to criticize, their feedback wasn't really helpful um, because... I feel like folks didn't understand what it takes to put on an event. There's a lot of strategy. There's a lot of logistics. There's a ton of things that they just don't know about that we had taken into account that we were trying to prepare. One of the biggest vocal criticisms we got was, how dare you have an outdoor event without an indoor backup? Okay, well, like we're already getting criticized for the corporatization of Pride, which is paying for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And... Like, with the money we got, we did what we could. We'd have to double the amount of money that was coming in to begin to afford to have a backup indoor location that right. we could just suddenly pivot to mm -hmm. to make things happen. And so anyways, um, yeah, uh, Pride was up, down, and all around. Mm -hmm. It was just all over the place for this particular month Indeed. for me. Um, I, I feel like... It was a good experience to see how things came together. I will say this. People were so nice. All the people waiting in line, mm -hmm. getting like wet in the rain. I was thanking them. You know, we're doing wristbands, and I'm being extra polite to people with arm hair. Like, making sure that the, you know, the adhesive part of the band, when you put it together, isn't going to catch their hair and cause issues or whatever. Um, but I kept thanking everybody. I was like, thank you for coming to Pride, given what's happening, you know, meeting the weather. Um, at that moment, and they were like, no, thank you for putting on Pride. We're so excited to be here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I was pleased that everyone was just so very nice about, they didn't give a shit about being in the rain. Um, they could have cared less about it, which 
I thought was interesting because I kind of expected more people to be pissy about it. But to be fair, I think those people just didn't come. Yeah. I mean, that's that's probably it. Right. Like, if you're going to be a bitch about it, like, you're probably just like, I'm just not even about coming. Like, right. I know, you know it's raining. And we knew that was going to happen. We knew we knew it was not going to be record-breaking attendance. We knew we were probably going to take a hit on the number of people that would come, how many vendors were going to be there. And that was the thing is, like, as we're setting up, we were having this kind of discussion, like, do we, how much do we set up? And it's like, well, we can only take away so many tables and chairs. And at that moment, we just had only been informed of a handful of people not coming. Right. Ultimately, we could have cut back a, a chunk, but then, then what? Like, mm-hmm. we might have not been ready. Yeah. So long story short, uh, pride, pride was just pride was pride. Pride was all experience. <laughs> the consensus for the one for June, June was a must. Yes, June was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very very much so. And yes, I am proud. I just don't want to go out amongst a lot of people, which is fine. Yeah, I don't see that as that big of a deal. Anyway, can we move on? I, I think so. Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, so over in Facebook, we had one new like this month. We would like to thank Corby Christopher for uh, liking us on Facebook. Corby Christopher! Is it a reference to No. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's a reference to the fifth album. Uh, Corbin! Oh! Oh! oh. As opposed to the all type classic Lulu multi Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but his name is No, Corbin. I know. I get that. Corbin, it's. Yeah. Someone was wearing a suit recently, and I can't remember what it was, but they made reference to the to the character. Who was the act? Was it, was it Chris Rock? Oh, you're talking about. That oh, played oh, the, oh, God. the celebrity DJ. No, 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 no. Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. It was Chris. That outfit that he was wearing, yeah. someone made reference to it. They were like, oh, that's very Fifth Element. And of course, somebody younger was probably like, I don't understand what that means. And then they were like, and then they did like a GIF or whatever where he like gets right up in the camera, like when they're on the ship. Anyways, total sidebar. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Damon, who do we uh, oh, recognize in the YouTube? So, area? sure. So, we have some new subscribers. Um, thank you, Dallas Dunstain, Eric Swan, hmm. Jesse Papa Bear, and Tim Taylor. Maybe not a tour man. Anyway. anyway. Oh. Uh, Before you move on. Oh, wait. Yes. I think it's I totally answered it in the second, next part. Yes, but I, we would like to thank everyone who has subscribed on YouTube because we hit a milestone. Oh. I don't know if you were aware of this. No. Jeff and I were made aware of it. Because we checked the email. <laughs> uh, we actually got to 500 subscribers. Woo! Subscribers. We're not going to get a medallion or a wall plaque or any of that. <laughs> no, that's that's going to be that, that that's far off. In fact, they, their email did make me laugh. They were like, "Congratulations! Like, look at your subscribership rate." Like, they were so like, you know, it's pre but it's yeah, so yeah, like yeah. optimistic about like you know what you've been doing. Yeah, yeah. So anyways. We also have two comments. So two comments on um, Seawell 740, which was our what's going on for last month. Uh, Bobby Miller 7477 said, Happy Pride Month. Great to see you. Great to see you guys. Woo. And so, yeah, thank you, Bobby. Um, and then for Seawell 742, which was, Does Anyone Woof Anymore? We got a message from, this is from Eric. Eric Swan 1417. I was surprised to see this pop up in my feed. Hi, Jeff. Reporting that Wolf is alive and well, so far as I can tell. The young Frankenstein hypothesis is plausible. Sounds more like oof to me for, for Terry Gar, but it's also possible that it arose separately within the bears. That's my cousin. Ah. <laughs> that's right. Um, so, yeah, if, if uh, and that was the episode, I think, that got us a lot of uh, interest in terms of like, like people eyeballs, like people mm-hmm. paying attention to the channel or whatever. Um, so basically, some things still hold true. Sex sells. So like when we did the let's talk about sex nudity, that one got a lot of eyeballs. Um, <laughs> but surprisingly, does anyone woof anymore? So I think anything that's like 
cultural or pop cultural or whatever, I guess, which is kind of ironic because they didn't quite know, but something about the logarithm. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> and guess what? I didn't have anything. <laughs> Oh, are we doing, are we moving? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. Oh, there we go. So, in the meantime, Gary, tell us about our patrons. Uh, we want to thank our lovely, lovely patrons uh, over on patreon.com slash cops up loud. Uh, you can join and you get um, extended versions of the episodes. Um, you also get different rewards, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But we want to recognize, um, we have three levels or tiers of uh, patrons. You have the Cubster level, which is Charles W. and Michael K. So we appreciate them. Our Uber level, which happens to be Dave T. Lee and Michael Q. And our buddies, which are Lloyd G. and Michael B. Yay. Yay. So speaking of uh, Patreon, we are excited because very soon we're going to have new merch design mm -hmm. stuff that's coming out um, through our website at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, as you may see, we'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, we have different designs of like merch available, and we have some new things that we've been working on. So uh, our patrons should be on the lookout for notification that they will be able, if you're at the reward tier, to get new items. Um, so yeah. And from our patrons too. Oh, we had a busy month. We did. Uh, we ended up with five episodes um, over the course of the month, the way it lined up. So we had their 745, which is what's going on for the month of May. Then we did 741 Altino Shade, our annual LGBTQIA plus pride discussion, this time for 2024. Um, we already mentioned it, 742 was the does anyone woke anymore. And then 743, we followed that up with our taste in men, then versus now. I think that one also got like some interest in folks. Um, in terms of what they they wanted to hear and or uh, see what we had to talk about. And then last week, uh, yeah, last week, we did Let's Landscape of Relationships. Dr. Edward Angelini Cook rejoined us after a brief hiatus, and we talked about confidence. So, um, yeah, and that, uh, we talked about the, I think, a little while ago. Just a quick. That makes 32 episodes. Oh, for landscape of relationships. So if you're newer to the podcast and you're not familiar with it, um, LOR as our series is something we started with um, Ed, let me double check, back in 2019. Oh. And it was originally going to be a one-off, just a, a show, and then we quickly realized there was more that we could discuss, and so we have been doing that now for a couple of years. Almost three dozen shows. Mm. So my recommendation to folks is if you're interested, uh, did we make that a playlist yet, Jeff? I think so. Um, for landscape or relationships? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I suggest that people go check it out. Um, I think it's a great way to learn more about, like, not just, like, romantic relationships, but work relationships, family dynamics. Like, there's a lot of stuff that we discuss in there. Um, we talk about in-laws. <laughs> we talk about chosen family. We talk about intimacy. Um, I'm just looking through the different topics, like apologizing, communication, jealousy, new relationships, struggles, adulting. So... It was great to have Ed back. So we had that uh, last week, and then we're here. Yay! Brand new month. And guess what? Time for this. Uh, help wanted. So now, you get, now you get to see us in real time. Looking at these, yeah. Actually, looking at these. Uh oh. Uh, I, uh, I, I need help breaking in my bed. Shameless self promotion. Yes. Yes, it is. I don't know. I think I think that the, the person has a nice ass. Small frame by the jockstrap. That bed looks amazing. Is this the first time this has ever been done on the show? Wow. Uh, maybe? No. Nope. And, and oh, for those who don't know, it's it's 
it's a tweet from Box Cup, whoever that is. Um, uh, hmm. The reason why I ask is for those that aren't aware of the history of the podcast, a long time ago there was this website called Craigslist <laughs> that is still around today, but it had it had a hookup uh, application section, um, and we as a as a group of hosts over the years we would pull different. Um, what was there? Missed encounters, I think, is was what it um, was. Misconnections. Misconnections. And so we would pull these from across the country and and kind of compete to read amongst them uh, for that week, which was the best post. Um, and so that ended up going away, and we pivoted and we turned it into uh, the Tumblr. The oh yes, that's right. It was Tumblr for a very long time. So it was Tumblr picks, and then Tumblr. Pivoted and didn't allow adult letter content really much anymore. So then we moved to Twitter, which we're still doing. Um, but I asked the question because I don't know if anyone's ever <laughs> used their own. And I don't assets, <laughs> <laughs> as it were. I don't think so. At least not. And I'm not criticizing. I'm just asking the question. I don't know if anyone's ever done that. By the way, I do need a camera. Thing. It takes me a shot. Uh, I don't recall us self-promoting in a way, but I, I mean, I know Jeff has mentioned like the porn that he's done in the past, and I know there's it's been... only one. Porn, <laughs> and um, I feel like maybe, um, possibly, maybe when we were doing Tumblr stuff, like Chester or somebody would. Put stuff of theirs that they had done, uh, but I, I, I don't. I, I think it's been a while since we've done it on Twitter, and unless I've done it myself, which I don't, I don't recall, but who knows? No, I think you do more important stuff, and you don't really share your important stuff on. Yeah, I usually don't here. on here, but I always give my um, Twitter in the in the in the part. Yeah, in the end, in so, the sky. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, that was, I mean, ass, um, ass, ass, ass. Oh, what? I, I'm not sure if you can tell him. You get around. Yes. You see that? See me going, oh. <laughs> It's the, did I get that picture? <laughs> I was trying to, to make it like a seductive face, but the camera angle. This is me trying to take a picture of my new, brand new bedroom. From my son. Mm -hmm. Totally understand. Not easy. In any case, Okay. Um, I said they really like this. This is from um, Kyle XLT5, um, and it is a picture of Kyle and their um, state of undress. Um, they are opened, I'm assuming, hoodie or at least some kind of, um, well, not captain, like sweater type shirt. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a, something. it looks like it's a robe, but it's not your terry cloth robe. It almost looks like it's a jersey knit. I think I have something similar to it, um, in my office that I use. So it's almost like a, uh, like a sweater jacket yeah, yeah. type thing. Mm -hmm. Like I... I can see some of my coworkers wearing something like this. It's not a smock, yeah. but, you know, it's yeah. not a wrap. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's open. It's casual. Yeah. I mean, it is, it, their fur is yeah. amazing. That's, that's what got me. So they are naked under this terry cloth, whatever you want to call it. Well, well you never know. know. They could be wearing knee highs. They could. I mean, it gets cut off at a certain point. Yeah. Right, right. So, so you, you can just, see the good. Right, so you can't see. They can have slippers on, yeah. you know. But um, you get a very, very, very furry um, chest and belly and legs and crotch and what have you. And um, he does, they do cut it off at um, right the tasteful level. Right. Yeah. But, right above it. Yeah. There's also a hint of a tattoo on the left thigh there too, which I'm kind of like fun. So yeah. Very handsome very handsome. Very, very, very um bearded. Um I was finding it interesting because 
it looks like their eyes are like not quite open, but yeah, they're cute. They're very cute. I would agree. Okay, so I have a question for the two of you. What is hanging on the wall next to their door? Or Sherman's knapsack. Well, I want you to tell me what you think it is. Because I've zoomed in on it. And from the initial picture, it looks a lot like one thing, and I don't think that's what it is. It's definitely not any, no. Is it an umbrella? So this is what it looks like zoomed in. Ah. Yeah, that's that's what I, I'm seeing too, but it looks like it's a... I mean, it could be... What the, the shape is giving... I don't... The shape is giving... It's giving adult toy. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like I, I can really? See, like, right next to the front door? <laughs> the thing is, kind of know, it? The, that is definitely... While I can see what you mean by shape, shaping this, um, uh, this looks like an engagement. It's like some sort of, like, like a flat. Yeah. I mean, it does, it also kind of looks like a sword. Mm -hmm. And there's something, again, it, there's something, like, along the wall higher, but this is, we, we go in depth. <laughs> uh, there's something, like, coming from it down. That I'm all I'm trying to decide. like it's either a cord or yeah. a chain yeah. or something. Yeah, something. I don't know, but if you don't pay close attention and you just kind of briefly look and you're like, really? So you're just gonna put a dildo up on the wall next to the door? And that's a little high for where you put a dildo. Well, it's not mounted to mount you. It's just <laughs> it's just on the wall. Anyway, it looks like uh... some kind of. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm just amused. At well, the... I can see see the the impression of a possible uh, uh, dildo or a butt plug or something. Um, it is definitely. I don't know. But they're they're sexy. Yeah, yeah it, it, it amused me. I mean, yeah. That. I mean, that's a good. Yes. Agreed. Huh. But by, by the distraction. Oh, this one. Gary. Um, so mine is titled an employee had always dreamed dot dot dot. The actual um, Twitter post says an employee had always dreamed to get fucked by his hot bear boss. Finally the dream came true. Uh, and this is by at um, Al Bobby XXX. It's called My Bear Boss. It says coming soon. It's a preview trailer of a uh, amateur made uh, film and it's hot. It's it's a. <laughs> I was waiting I for I, one of you. I thought I hit. I thought I hit mute. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. It is on your OnlyFans. And yeah. Just for fans. So. Right. But I'm Bobby. I, but to be I, fair, I to be fair, this. Uh, oh, I I have see I have my OnlyFans. That's content created for you. <laughs> <laughs> Royalty freeze. That is uh, brown chicken, brown cow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you were you. I I've been following Al Bobby for yeah. a while. Alan Bobby. Alan Bobby. Al Bobby. Well, I'm just yeah. getting Al Bobby on their, their things, but <laughs> I've been following them for a while. Um, and yeah. So and I don't I don't. There's a one that we're like. Fucking in a showroom and a guy walks past. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. anyway, I liked the preview video, so I wanted to share it because oh, I, I do think a fair amount of people have this fantasy. <laughs> that, that that shot is their pin post. <laughs> the shower. Yes. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Now I feel like I need to go see the pen post. And if for any of you who are interested, this will all be on our. Uh, yeah, so you can go to comesoutloud.com and and see. The all links. links will be posted there. Oh, I think I remember this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. I did definitely see this before. <laughs> My favorite part is like how amused he is. <laughs> like, whoops, yeah. Well, uh, here's the thing: is he kind of just like. 
he stops the motion, but just kind of like walks in the pants and doesn't seem to to separate. Well, I mean, and the thing is, you don't know where this was. Like, I was intrigued when I saw that video clip, and I was like, okay, is this a bathhouse? Is this a campground? Like, is this at a place where, the, like, this is an unexpected behavior, and that's why it's kind of not quite a big deal? Yeah. I feel like... As opposed, as opposed to the YMCA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like looking at the picture and getting some context, clue, context clues, this looks like probably like a campground shower. Yeah. Um, something along those lines, because I'm, so for everybody, investigative reporter here, um, I'm noticing the, the <laughs> tin roof up in the corner. Not uh, rusted. Not rusted. See? Yeah. See? Um, and it's clear like this was built, so yeah. I'm thinking it just might have been, like this might be like a campground or something along those lines, probably a gay campground where, like, oh, they're, they're not just fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Look, they, they make sure that they're doing their content creation in an appropriate appropriate right. location. Right. Agreed. All right. All right. Moving on to the lights. I might be able to... Yeah, yes, Damon. You like, are. Like, what, is, what is this business? So, um, Toku Shoutsu is a YouTube page. Um, both... Yeah, yeah that, that happens. That's the thing. But they are um, essentially what caught my eye is they stream um, the original like Sentai's for um, the Sentai series, which is where Power Rangers came from, and they they stream it pretty much constantly, oh. um, and it's live stream, so you're not catching you know an episode like it's not each episode, it's just literally they play it on loop um, from beginning to end. Um, hmm. and it's several of the ones that have been adapted into, um, Power Rangers series. It's also been some that are not, um, um, and they also do other, um, shows. Like I'm looking at their page right now and they have like Reboot and Mask, um, but it's South it's Studios. Yeah, it is, uh, it says Toku Shoutsu is your home for Godzilla, Ultraman, Kamen Rider, Super Sentai and more Tokusatsu, an award winning 24 7 streaming channel from Shout Studio. Hmm. Yeah, so Shout Factory uh, yeah. is, it, or it has the license for this content. Yeah. So, wow. Um, I think they also have like similar channels on, on some other of the streaming platforms as well. Yeah. They, um, such as like TV or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it mentioned they have um, currently on YouTube Pluto T. Pluto TV and Twitch. Yeah. So they got they've got a bunch of stuff. And I think uh, they also have their own uh, bot service, DOD service. Um from Shout Factory where you can actually just like if you want to look for a specific show or something and not have to work for the linear stream. Not to see this is something that I'm yeah. well familiar with this type of thing. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm surprised they haven't like tried to get into the prime time channel. Mm -hmm. like, I do, and it's like I've been watching um, from here specifically. I've seen um, I watched Jetman, which is an earlier season of it. I've seen some episodes of the Z Ranger, Z Ranger, which is the one that became Power Rangers, the original Power Ranger. Um, here. And then there's a few others that I've been yeah, enjoying. Yeah. I've actually seen most of the, the Sentai series. Um, yeah. And I, 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 I've seen some of them, but I hadn't seen all of them. Um, and this was a this is a really great way for me personally to watch it because I can catch it when like if I have like a little free time, I can like catch mm -hmm. it, jump in. I'm not. I, I try not to sit for like you know hours on end trying to watch it, but I will watch like an episode or two. I caught um, the end of it was not oh gosh what book it was the one that was adapted in the second season of Power Rangers. It was are you talking about Die Ranger? Die Ranger, yes. Die yeah. Ranger is yeah I, did I like love Die Ranger. Die Ranger is so much better than them. 
dealing with them? Well, yeah. Actually, folks talking to Jim about this. So, Gary, who may not know what we're talking about. So the Absolutely second season, not. Yeah. So the second season of Power Rangers, they adapted, they used the Zords and the White Tiger Ranger, which became the White Ranger for Power Rangers, um, uh, for that series. But they didn't change the suits. And the main reason they didn't change the suits is because Power Rangers was this phenomenon that became very popular, and they had a lot of merchandise. They, and they, yeah. they thought that Americans wouldn't understand. Yeah, Americans would And the thing is, I think they would. Especially they, considering they were using the same actors. Yeah. We, we know now, in a way, that it could have potentially been. And they, they actually ended up doing that. And after, yeah. After uh, once they hit the O Rangers, yeah, I think it was yeah, they did Zio, yeah, they used Zio Rangers. Oh, Zio, yeah, it was Zio. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, O Rangers, yeah, Zio, same, same difference. So yeah, that's 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 my um link for today. Showing TV. Yeah, that one is. I'm trying to find their their Gary. Um, I just have two picks for this month. I don't think I listed uh, the first one yet. Um, for those that are uh, interested slash like enjoy Star Wars as a IP, you may already be well aware. Over on Disney Plus, there's a new series called The Acolyte, um, which takes place a um, hundred years before The Phantom Menace. And it's after a whole new era that they've created called the High Republic. It's a live action show. It's actually, personally, I'm enjoying it. Mm. I like it. It is not without flaws. Of course. The the review bombing that's been going on online with like Rotten Tomatoes and these other platforms is just really like outlandish. Mm. Um, they're down to the, I think the last two episodes to come. It's an eight episode series. Uh, I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen. Apparently, the person that, that like headlined the show um, said that a lot of questions were going to be answered, so they weren't going to really have cliffhangers, but there's also things that will not be explained, so if there is a potential season two, like stuff will get flashed out later on. Mm. So like the main concept of the first season is going to be handled and contained. Um, I don't know. Like it, it, There's been a lot of... It's very twisty, turny, intriguey, like there's been theories about what this is and what that is and what's going on and already things are proving not to be what people thought. Um, so, yeah, like, this is the way I feel about this stuff. I'm here to be entertained. That's all I care about. I get that people are very passionate and they get really into the, like, you know, well, actually, technically, <laughs> this is not how it, and it's like, for the love of everything, like, it's happened with Star Trek, it's happening with Star Wars. Like, you end up with this stuff where, like, previous content that was created is no longer canon. Mm. And it gets a special name. So, like, in Star Wars, they call it Legends. And, you know, so people are, like, extrapolating and saying, well, this couldn't have happened, or blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, actually, like, there's new ownership. There's been new ownership for years. George doesn't have it. It belongs to Disney. They're doing what they're doing. And what uh, what is ironic to me is... A lot of the podcast stuff that I watch and listen to, they're all like, if you don't like it, don't watch it. It's that simple. Like, like if you're not interested in it, then stop watching it or whatever. You're part of the problem. Like, if you keep watching it, like, that's a view. And that's, like, that's a thing. And, like, it, so it amuses me no end. So I just say, if you're so many interested and you haven't watched it yet, it'll be done in a couple more weeks. Then go and watch the whole thing. Because they're really seeing an episode a week. They're doing episodic as opposed to, like, like mm. binging. Mm -hmm. Disney, like all at once. Disney does have most of the time, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, and so, so I mean, it, it, yeah, it just kind of depends. So there's that. Um, and then every time I'm down here, because I don't have Max, aka Cinemax, um, as a, a service a streaming platform. But whenever I'm here visiting my friends, they got me into watching this show called Hacks. And honestly, it is probably one of my all-time favorite shows I have seen in a very long time. Mm. Jean Smart is in it. She's absolutely amazing as Deborah Vance. Um, it's it's about a aged comedian who has a Las Vegas like uh, show, like a you know um, headlining like performance continually, that ends up getting approached to reduce the amount of shows that they do, mm. and so it starts this whole spiral series of things. Long story short. Um, 
it's I, I don't know how to explain it. Like there's a team of people. She's got a couple of gays. That's like so there's like gay subplots that come in and go out. I just it's so well written from a comedy perspective that you kind of get to see the inside of what it is to be a, a comedian and like to go on the road and like different stuff. And there's the whole dynamic of her being a woman, being a woman of age. Like, mm-hmm. And then, like, this latest season was about reconciling paths because she told a lot of inappropriate jokes in the past because mm. that's what comedy content was. Um, so, yeah, like, they've had four seasons. Um, or is it three seasons? And three seasons. They're about to have a fourth season. Um, and we just finished watching it. Like, when I got down here, um, they were like, they were like, oh, you should get caught up on hacks. And so we were talking and they were amazed how much stuff I remembered from when we left off that I had previously watched. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, well, this is when this happens and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, how do you even remember that? Because they watched it and really loved it and they don't even remember it. <laughs> and I was like, and that's when it hit me. I was like, oh, I guess I'm really invested. I really do like the show if I remember that much of the plot line and the story and the character. So I, I highly uh, recommend this show. I liked it. Um, actually, Max is the name of the service by Warner Brothers Discovery, who owns Cinemax and HBO and DC and all the Warner Brothers and all the Discovery. Okay, well, so it's I, not Max. It I'm is, not on it, Max. any it of those platforms. Though. So, to me, it's... Max. Max is just the the Warner Brothers Discovery version of Disney Plus. Yeah, and Paramount Plus. There we go. So yeah, the more you know. So anyways, the show is called Hacks, H-A-C-K-S, um, as in to be a comedy hack. And uh, it's really, really good. And then there's a, a an assistant writer in the show, a character, um, Hannah. I can't remember what her last name is. Uh, I'm yeah, she plays Ava, who is the assistant. She is so good in this. And in this last season, there was such a great emotional like scene. We were all in agreement. We're like, she has to get an award. Like, she has to get nominated. Mm-hmm. It was... Uh, astounding. Um, anyways, but I, I really, really think that um, people should check it out uh, if you're kind of interested in that. Are you hungry? Uh, yeah, getting there. Yeah, I'm a little bit hungry. I think people who are also hungry can tell us what their favorite foods are. They can do that over at ComesOutLoud.com. She has an email at ComesOutLoud at gmail.com. You can get some voicemail at 361-265-8255. That's 361-SeaWaltTalk. You can also follow us on Facebook, uh, X, and YouTube. That comes up in the appropriate place the URL. Uh, join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. Find out when we're planning on recording these shows. When we actually do them live, sorry we didn't do it this time. We're still figuring this type of thing out. Yeah. Uh, but that will be at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements, such as... Um, Give me some new designs, but we've got a handy towel, we've got some hats, got some shirts. Consent with my role play. We've got, uh, you can celebrate the next gen house, which includes these two lovely folks. I'm I'm old. Old school. You get to say this. Because this was said, so as a sidebar, this was said by somebody at the Pride Fest. Because they got stopped by security coming in. They got out to their car and came out. And security was like, Are you a part of the board? And the person said, "Bored. I'm the founder of this event." <laughs> so you're a founder. <laughs> founder. Founder. You can put that on your title. <laughs> but some of our designs were designed by Smash. You can find more of his work at thepublic.com/slash/users/slash/bear. All the rest of it is at thepublic.com/slash/comesoutloud. You can also uh, become a patron at patreon.com/slash/comesoutloud. And if you want to send us a donation, you can do that at paypal.me/slash/comesoutloud. Please stop over in your favorite. Podcast platform. Rate us, review us, gets us up in the algorithm. More people will find us. We'd appreciate that very much. You can find me anywhere on the internet. Box that box, puppy box, cub, box, cub, uh, box something or other. And if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Speater Cub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most favorite related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter or pup upper 79 on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. But the safe for work stuff, you can find me as DMAGamer79 on Twitter. If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online at Gabriel73. Hey, with that.
Say good night, everybody. Uh, good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. switch the scene while I was playing music because of the way I'm doing it. Uh, so we're still there. Hi. Hi. Hi, uh, hi everybody. Welcome to the post show. Yeah, mm. there we go. We're going to the title card for a second and then then I can do my